surely many verses of the holy books particularly in the upanishads of samved spoke of this in a most and ultimate thing wonderful verses your soul is the whole world what's written there and it was written that man in his sleep in his deep sleep would meet with his innermost part and would reside in the atma marvelous wisdom was in these verses all knowledge of the wisest ones had been collected here in magic woods pure as honey collected by bees no not to be looked down upon was the tremendous amount of enlightenment which lay here collected and preserved by innumerable generations of wise brahmans but where were the brahmans who had succeeded in not just knowing the deepest of all knowledge but also to live it where was the knowledgeable one who wove his spell to bring his familiarity with the atma out of the sleep into the state of being awake into the life into every step of the way into word and deed siddhat knew many brahmans chiefly his father the pure one the scholar his father was to be admired quiet and noble were his manners pure his life wise his words but even he who knew so much did he live in blissfulness did he have peace was he not also just a searching man a thirsty man did he not again and again have to drink from holy sources from the offerings from the books from the disputes of the brahmans why did he have to wash off sins every day strive for a cleansing every day over and over every day was not atma in him did not the pristine source spring from his heart it had to be found the pristine source in one's own self it had to be possessed everything else was searching was a detour was getting lost these were siddhat's thoughts this was his thirst this was his suffering often he spoke to himself from upanishad the words truly the name of the brahman is satyam verily he who knows such a thing will enter the heavenly world every day often it seemed near the heavenly world but never he had reached it completely never he had quenched the ultimate thirst and among all the wise and wisest men he knew and in whose instructions he had received among all of them there was no one who had reached it completely the heavenly world who had quenched it completely the eternal thirst siddhat spoke to his friend govin my dear come with me under the banyan tree let's practice meditation they went to the banyan tree they sat down siddhat right here govin 20 paces away while putting himself down ready to speak the om siddhat repeated the words om is the bow the arrow is so the brahman is the arrow's target that one should incessantly hit after the usual time of the exercise and meditation had passed govind rose the evening had come it was time to perform the evening ablution he called siddhat's name siddhat did not answer Siddhartha sat there lost in thought. His eyes were rigidly focused towards a very distant target. He wrapped up in contemplation. His soul sent after the Brahman as an arrow. Once Samanas had traveled through Siddhartha's town, ascetics on a pilgrimage, three skinny withered men, neither old nor young, with dusty and bloody shoulders. almost naked scorched by the sun surrounded by loneliness strangers and enemies to the world strangers and blank jackals in the realm of humans behind them blew a hot scent of quiet passion of destructive service of merciless self-denial in the evening after the hour of contemplation 
Siddharth spoke to Govind. Early tomorrow morning, my friend, Siddharth will go to the Samanas. He will become a Samana. Govind turned pale when he heard these words and read the decision in the motionless face of his friend, unstoppable like the arrow shot from the bow. Soon and with the first class, Govind realized, now it is beginning. Now Siddharth is taking his own way. Now his fate is beginning to sprout. He exclaimed, O oh Siddharth, will your father permit you to do that? Siddharth looked over as he was just waking up. Arrow fast, he read in Govind's soul, read the fear, read the submission. He spoke to Govind quietly. Govind, let's not waste words. Tomorrow, at daybreak, I will begin the life of the Samanas. Speak no more of it. Siddharth entered the chamber where his father was sitting on a mat and stepped behind his father, remained standing there until his father felt that someone was standing behind him. He said, Is that you, Siddharth? Then say what you came to say. Siddharth, with your permission, my father, I came to tell you that it is my longing to leave your house tomorrow and go to the ascetics. My desire is to become a Samana. May my father not oppose this. The Brahman fell silent and remained silent for so long that the stars in the small window wandered and changed their relative positions. Silent and motionless stood the son with his arms folded. Silent and motionless sat the father on the mat, and the stars traced their paths in the sky. Then spoke the father, Not proper it is for a Brahman to speak harsh and angry words, but indignation is in my heart. I wish not to hear this request for a second time from your mouth. Slowly the Brahman rose. Siddharth stood silently, his arms folded. What are you waiting for? asked the father. Siddharth, you know what? Indignant, the father left the chamber. Indignant, he went to his bed and lay down. After an hour, since no sleep had come over his eyes, the Brahman stood up, paced to and fro, and left the house. Through the small window of the chamber, he looked back inside, and there he saw Siddharth standing, his arms folded, not moving from his spot. With anxiety in his heart, the father returned to his bed, and he came back after an hour. He came back after two hours, looked through the window, saw Siddharth standing in the moonlight by the light of the stars in the darkness. And he came back hour after hour, silently. He looked into the chamber, saw him standing in the same place, filled his heart with anger, filled his heart with unrest, filled it with sadness. And in the night's last hour, before the day began, he returned, stepped into the room, and saw the young man standing there, who seemed tall and like a stranger to him. He spoke, Siddharth, what are you waiting for? You know what? Will you always stand that way and wait until it becomes morning, noon and evening? I will stand and wait. You will become tired, Siddharth. I will become tired. You will fall asleep, Siddharth. I will not fall asleep. You will die, Siddharth. I will die. And would you rather die than obey your father? Siddharth has always obeyed his father. So will you abandon your plan? Siddharth will do what his father will tell him to do. 
the first light of day shone into the room. The Brahman saw that Siddharth was trembling softly in his knees. In Siddharth's face, he saw no trembling. His eyes were fixed on a distant spot. Then his father realized that even now, Siddharth no longer dwelt with him in his home, that he had already left him. The father touched Siddharth's shoulder. He spoke, You will go into the forest and be a Samana. When you will have found blissfulness in the forest, then come back and teach me to be blissful. If you will find disappointment, then return and let us once again make offerings to the gods together. Go now and kiss your mother. Tell her where you are going to. But for me, it is time to go to the river and to perform the first ablution. He took his hand from the shoulder of his son and went outside. Siddharth wavered to the side as he tried to walk. He put his limbs back under control, bowed to his father and went to his mother to do as his father had said. As he slowly left on stiff legs in the first light of the day, the still quiet town, a shadow rose near the last hut. Who had crouched there and joined the pilgrim? It was Govind. Siddharth smiled and said, You have come, Govind. I have come.